Hi, this week I'm going to talk about how to use intermittent fasting for type 2 diabetes and we're going to go through it step by step and it's coming right up. When you think about type 2 diabetes, the first thing to understand is what it is. Essentially, type 2 diabetes is a dietary disease where your body has stored too much sugar. So when your body stores energy in the form of calories, it can store it as sugar or it can store it as body fat. When you're taking sugar in and you take too much, your body's going to store some of that away. Once you fill up that storage, then it's going to turn it into body fat, and that's called de novo lipogenesis. So think of it like a refrigerator and a freezer, for example. So if you go to the grocery store and you have too much food for dinner that night, you're going to put it in the fridge. Once your fridge is full, you're going to move it downstairs to your basement freezer. So there's two different ways that you can store it up. At some point, if you keep buying too much food, then everything's going to overflow. Your refrigerator is going to overflow. It's going to overflow into your freezer. When your freezer is full, well, then you just can't store any more. And then that food is just going to be out on the table and it's going to go bad. Same thing with your body. Once it's full, all the sugar can get stored and it has nowhere to go. So it's just going to spill out into the blood as that blood goes up then you're going to see that your blood sugar is up. Your doctor is going to tell you you have type 2 diabetes. But the underlying problem really is that your body has too much sugar. Not just in the blood, but in all of the storage compartments. Think about it this way. If you have a car and you want to fill up on gas, so you fill up on gas three times a day. Gas provides energy for the car, just like sugar provides energy for our bodies. So you're filling up your car, you fill it up, and now your gas tank is full. Well, you can't store anymore, but you keep pumping gas into the car anyway. Now that gas is going to overflow into the back seat. It's going to make you sick. Well, what are you going to do? Well, the first thing you're going to do is stop going to the gas station. The second thing you're going to do is start driving that car around so that you use up some of that gas. And it's no different for our body. Once we have too much sugar, it's just... All our energy compartments, storage compartments are completely full. We can't store any more. So if you don't eat fasting, then you're going to allow your body some time to burn down those excess stores of sugar, just like driving that car around. So it's really no different than that. And as you start fasting, your body's going to use up some of the sugar. As you use up some of the sugar, you're going to lose weight and that diabetes can actually go away. Does this actually work? Well, it really is inevitable for type 2 diabetes that this is going to work because once you understand that your body has too much energy, not too little energy, and remember, calories are a form of food energy, then you're just letting your body naturally use it up. That's precisely the reason you have those storage compartments of energy because it's there when you have no food coming in, then your body can provide the energy it needs. So let your body use it for what it's there for. Even back in 1916, Dr. Elliot Jocelyn, one of uh, history's greatest diabetologists, said that it's almost inevitable that it's going to work. He had such great experience with fasting that he thought that it was inevitable that everybody would just accept that this was the preferred treatment. Then, of course, they didn't understand about type 1 versus type 2. And then when insulin got discovered, a lot of the dietary treatments got forgotten about. So let's take you through how to do fasting for type 2 diabetes step by step. The first step and the most important step is to talk to your doctor. You have to remember that the medications that you're being prescribed, if you are on medications, depends on that specific diet that you're eating at that time. So if you change your diet or if you do fasting, 
the requirements for medications are going to change. So you must have somebody to monitor that and adjust those medications for you and that's the job of your doctor. Monitoring your blood sugars is extremely important because you want to avoid the sugars going too high if you adjust your medications and avoid them going too low, which is the hypoglycemia and it's very dangerous. It can put you in danger if you find that you're shaking, if you're sweating, that's a sign that you might have very low sugar. So make sure you monitor your sugars. Something like a continuous glucose monitor um, is something that is very useful for mon monitoring closely the sugars. Now, sometimes people think that, hey, if my sugars are going low, that's not a good thing. If you're on medications, well, then maybe you need to reduce those medications. Remember, when you're using your diet or fasting to lower your blood sugars and your sugars go low, that's what you're trying to do. But it means you're taking too much medication for the amount of uh, food that you're eating. And therefore, you have to reduce that medication. And reducing the medication is a good thing. If you're taking less medication for your type 2 diabetes, it means your diabetes is getting better. So the first step, talk to your doctor, monitor your sugars, adjust your medications. That is the most critical step. And after each other step, you always have to come back to this step and make sure you're doing this safely. The second step is to cut out all the snacks and go back to a sort of traditional dietary pattern of three meals a day and after dinner, you're not gonna eat until the next day's breakfast. So if you finish dinner at six or seven and you eat breakfast at seven or eight, you're talking about 12 to 14 hours of fasting and you should be doing that every single day. The third thing is to adjust the foods in your diet. So not just the fasting, but really cut down those foods that are going to be really bad for your type two diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is a disease where you have too much sugar. Glucose is a type of sugar. Carbohydrates are a type of sugar. So therefore, if you're going to get more energy from proteins and fats versus carbohydrates, well, that's going to be a little bit better. So try to cut down the sugary foods. Try and cut down the refined carbohydrates, the bread and the rice and the pasta, for example, because you know that if you eat bread, your blood sugar is going to rise much higher than if you ate an egg. We know that from all those uh, studies with the glycemic index. So try to stick with unrefined foods and try to stick to lower carbohydrate foods. The fourth step is to gradually increase your fasting period. Once you've adjusted the foods, now you can start to gradually lengthen out that fasting period. So you can go instead of 12 to 14 hours, you can go maybe to 16 hours a day in an eight hour eating window. This is called time restricted eating. And what you're doing is simply allowing your body a bit more time to burn off that sugar. Just like that car, you're giving it more time to drive around. And at this step, you wanna go back and make sure that you're doing step one, which is monitoring your sugars, talking to your doctor, adjusting those medications if you have it. So the next step is to, again, gradually push that higher. And you don't have to do it every day, but you may go to a 24 hour period of fasting, for example, once a week. And you might not do that every day. You might start with once a week and then gradually build it up to twice a week or three times a week. It's okay if you're feeling hungry, that's normal. But if you're getting a lot of low blood sugars, if you're just feeling very tired, if you can't get out of bed, that's not normal. Your body has an excess of energy, not too little energy, it has too much energy. So if you're feeling fatigued, well, that might be an indication of problems. And that's where you have to do it safely. But fasting is a great tool for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. A lot of people have been able to use it successfully to reverse their type 2 diabetes. As shown in this article from Reader's Digest, they talked to a number of people who were able to reverse their disease simply by doing the intermittent fasting. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you're interested in it, 
you might want to look at my video on type 2 diabetes and how fasting can help for more information. Thanks everybody, I'll see you next week.